They called him Big Papa, the voice of Brooklyn streets. With mad flows and fat rhymes, he rose from the concretes. But just as he blew up nationwide, his life was stolen far too soon. We're gonna dive back in time to relive Biggie's amazing rise and tragic fall. From the streets as a kid to ruling the game from the mic. But do we know who took him out in his prime? Christopher Wallace was born in 1972 in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. Raised mainly by his mother, he developed a love of music at a young age. Unfortunately, after dropping out of high school, Wallace began dealing drugs and was imprisoned for possession with intent to sell. It was in prison that he dedicated himself fully to music, adopting the well-known persona Biggie Smalls. Upon his release in the early 90s, Wallace worked with local producer Sean Puffy Combs and began recording demo tapes under his new moniker, the Notorious B.I.G. His raw storytelling style, delivered in a deep baritone over simple yet effective beats, began gaining notoriety in the local underground scene. Biggie's skills saw him rise rapidly as one of Brooklyn's premier MCs, working with artists like Mary J. Blige and becoming Combs' flagship artist at his new record label, Bad Boy Records. Released in March of 94, his album, Ready to Die, saw an immediate commercial success and critical acclaim. Anchored by the hit singles Juicy, Big Papa, and One More Chance, the album earned Biggie the status of a lyrical genius and one of the premier storytellers of the genre. His depictions of the gritty aspects of inner-city crime and addiction resonated nationwide. However, the tensions, they were beginning to rise behind the scenes. That summer, bad boy artist Lil' Kim joined Biggie, Combs, and others on a West Coast promotional tour. During a stop in LA, members of Death Row confronted Combs' entourage at a club over disparaging comments allegedly made by Combs. Though no violence erupted, the beef was solidified. Increasingly, rappers like the notorious B.I.G. were avoiding West Coast appearances out of safety concerns. The following months of 1994 and 95 saw the rap feud escalate dramatically through subliminal and direct disses traded in songs and interviews. Rival acts like Tupac Shakur, in particular, took aim at Biggie and Combs, claiming they exploited gangster personas despite not truly living that lifestyle. For his part, Biggie denied direct involvement and emphasized his lyrics were pure fiction, though audiences and detractors alike debate how much was real. By late 96, the hip-hop war had reached a boiling point. That September, Tupac was sadly shot after a Mike Tyson boxing match in Las Vegas. Six days later, Tupac tragically succumbed to his injuries, with the slaying unsolved up until the 2023 arrest of Kefi D, who had been the last living witness and suspect to the murder. But that, that's a story for another time. Biggie continued recording his sophomore album Life After Death as the coast-to-coast -coast rivalry spiraled further following Tupac's murder. Released just weeks later in March of 97, the ambitious double album spawned three top ten singles and debuted at number one on the Billboard charts, securing international superstardom. On the night of March 8, 1997, he attended the after-party for a Tyson fight held at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. As guests were departing, a robbery occurred in the hotel's valet area that would shock the world. Unidentified males fired multiple shots, wounding fighter Sugar Ray in the leg, along with two others. While no deaths resulted, it marked the latest incidents of violence seemingly connected to the ongoing hip-hop conflict. Sadly, just over a week later, Biggie was in Los Angeles to promote life after death and visit local radio stations. In the early hours of March 9th, Wallace's SUV slowed at a red light on Wilshire Boulevard. A vehicle suddenly pulled up alongside them, and the occupant brazenly opened fire with a 9mm, fatally striking Biggie multiple times. Despite immediately summoning paramedics who rushed him to Cedar sinai Medical Center, the rapper unfortunately succumbed to his wounds. LAPD launched an intense homicide investigation under the leadership of Detective Russell Poole. However, Unlike Tupac's earlier slaying, it remains unsolved to this day with controversial theories implicating associates of Death Row Records as possible perpetrators. The targeting of the world's largest rap star in a drive-by shooting sent shockwaves through the industry and public alike. As family and fans grieved, law enforcement sought answers in two related yet unsolved cases that came to define an era. The investigation rather unoriginally dubbed Biggie Small's murder investigation amassed over 1,600 pieces of evidence, yet faced numerous challenges. Witnesses were uncooperative amid fears of reprisals. 
while Detective Poole became convinced rogue LA cops were obstructing their work at the behest of those on death row, and the FBI file contained allegations a corrupt LAPD officer actively tipped off death row over Biggie's travel plans. Further southwest in Las Vegas, the future for those wounded in the MGM Grand incident initially seemed bright as all survived their injuries. However, the case soon stalled without leads. Theories linked it to a disrespected death row artist or as a diversion for Tupac's earlier robbery. Whatever the motive, it marked a major escalation that deepened the criminal element embraced by some figures in the rap conflict. By the late 90s, both investigations had essentially ground to a halt. Detective Poole retired in frustration while those close to the cases began dying under suspicious circumstances. To this day, rabid speculation and counter theories have proliferated online as mysteriously as the slayings. With time, hope for closure continues fading for those touched by the legacies of two rap icons struck down in their prime amid a storm of cross-coastal violence and intrigue that defined an era in the void left by the unsolved cases. Theories have flourished with new claims and discoveries emerging yearly. Some speculate rogue officers were paid to eliminate witnesses, while others claim figures at the highest levels of death row had Biggie and Tupac assassinated in a calculated bid to end the rap conflict. Retired Detective Poole remained a vocal proponent of the theory that death row boss Shug Knight arranged for hitmen from the crooked LAPD Rampart Division to carry out both killings. As the cases gathered dust, a minor break occurred in March 2021 when the FBI reopened their inquiry based on a confidential letter suggesting they pursue new leads. Exact details remain classified, though it renewed hope among those anxious for answers some 25 years later. For now, the full culprits and motives behind the related slayings remain one of rap's darkest mysteries. While the circumstances around their deaths remain shrouded in controversy, the legacies of the notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur have flourished as few others in rap history. In life, they have cemented themselves as icons who transcended genre to symbolize the social issues of their generation on a global scale. Both wield enduring multi-platinum sales, with Biggie's life after death achieving diamond certification. Their catalogs are revered worldwide for raw storytelling that injected the soul of the streets into beats. Hits like California Love, Hail Mary, and Juicy remain anthems for millennials who learned life lessons from their lyrics. Beyond music, they left an indelible mark on entertainment through biopics, documentaries, and films exploring their artistry and tumultuous rise and fall. Even casual fans are drawn to examining the enigma of their slayings and dissecting the multifaceted East versus West Coast debate, which ignited a dangerous real-life subplot in the history of rap. While the full context of their deaths may never be definitively understood, their intangible presence lingers heavier than any tombstone. Two decades hence, the fabled figures of Biggie and Tupac continue captivating new audiences worldwide as iconic musical artists.